It is rare to have maned wolf pups. Like most carnivores, they're not necessarily that easy to breed. There are five Maine wolf pups living in North America at the moment, and two of them are right here in the foothills of the Shenandoah Mountains. Maned wolves are just amazing in how different they are. I mean, most people, when you mention wolves, they immediately start thinking about gray wolves or timber wolves. Maned wolves are as far removed from that as you can get and still be in the canid family. Maned wolves are the largest canids in South America. They are considered near threatened with somewhere around 20,000 individuals in the wild. They don't have that pack social structure that you see with almost all other canids. A male and a female may form a loosely monogamous pair, but outside of breeding season and raising pups, they don't really spend a lot of time together. Being able to breed them in captivity, it's essentially like having an insurance policy against what may happen in the wild. Echo is the most valuable male that's held in captivity because his genetic lines are not very well represented. He is paired with Zeta, a female that was born in Florida. These guys, they only have one estrus cycle a year, so you have about a five-day window that a female can even get pregnant in a year. Echo and Zeta have finally been successful after three breeding seasons together. The pups are six months old as of today. We have one male and one female. The female pup is a little bit more feisty and fiery than what the male is. Um, we call him our little mellow male. And he actually has a little floppy ear that you can see as he runs. Any pups are extremely valuable to the survival of the species. In breeding maned wolves, there has been some work done with in vitro fertilization. IVF would open up an entirely new world of possibilities in being able to actually use genetic material from individuals who aren't able or willing to breed. But while IVF has been successfully used in humans and in other species, for some reason, we haven't been able to figure out how to do this with canids. Until recently, where two of our researchers here at SCBI have managed to crack that mystery. Researchers have been trying to do IVF in the dog for about 40 years now. Over the 40 years, there have been tens of thousands of eggs that people have tried to fertilize with IVF. But this is the first time we've had live birth. These puppies are the first born by in vitro fertilization in the world. Puppies have all been adopted out into happy families, and I actually have one myself named Cannon, who is a cannonball, actually, um, of energy. Cannon regularly beats up with two of his litter mates, Zivy and Buddy, at a local dog park in town. The Dog In Vitro Fertilization Project was this joint collaboration between Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute and Cornell University to solve some of these decades-old problems in conservation that are facing canid species. You know, at the beginning, I kind of thought it was probably going to be a long shot, but we got closer and closer every time. One of the biggest keys to solving this mystery was actually the timing of collecting the eggs from the female. So in a lot of species, including the human, you can actually pull the egg directly out of the ovary and it's ready to fertilize, it's mature. But in the dog, it's different. We found that, that day four after ovulation was actually when the eggs were best fertilized and had the highest rates of embryo production. When we saw those first heartbeats and little toes that were kicking, that was, it was a pretty awesome moment. I remember when he was it's so small that I could only see him in a microscope. You know, he was just two cells together, and I saw that, and now he's this crazy, hungry, sofa-eating, very snuggly puppy. And sometimes I just hold him up, and I'm like, I made this. 
Now that we have in vitro fertilization developed in the domestic dog, we have this awesome tool that has the potential to help our conservation efforts for the main wolf. IVF allows us the opportunity to move genes around the world without actually having to move wolves around the world. Because Maine wolves are so few in numbers in captivity, every single individual is, is vital to the survival of the population. Any new generation that we have for these guys is, is extremely important.